Now, this video, uh, you can see I have this in millisieverts, and this is also in millisieverts. If you know before, I said don't have your meter in millisieverts unless you know what you're measuring. Well, this time I know what I'm measuring. And since both of these meters are calibrated for cesium-137, I am going to expose both of them to a 10 microcuries of cesium-137. What you can see here, tube is on the left, tube is on the center here. So I'm going to drop it right here and we'll see what they do. Bringing over the lead pig, getting the samples, dropping cesium-137. And we are in disco mode. Now they're not too far off. a little more even by switching this to alpha, beta, and gamma. <coughs> so the main sensor, the you can see the top number on the SOX is uh, 7.4 and the gamma scout is around 10. The search number is at 15. That probably is a little bit high. But now, we'll go up to the measurement, and you see they're in the tens right now. Yes, yes, I know you're alarming. Thank you. I just reset the alarm and it just ignored me and went back to measuring. Looks like the silvix is reading a little bit high, or it may just be since the tube is so long, it's getting more counts, and this is oriented to facing straight toward it. But let's really put it through a torture test and set it right on top of it. Get this right up to it. This is 10 microcuries. It is the strongest source that you can legally buy in the United States without a license, at least of cesium-137. This is an exempt amount uh, it doesn't mean it doesn't need to be handled with respect. Uh, you can see it's climbing above 40, and it climbs very slowly. <clears throat> the Gamma Scout's sitting at 24, although it is not sitting directly on it. Now if we just move this off and set the tube directly on it, you will probably see it jump up dramatically. Ooh, 80, 90, 96, oh, broke a hundred microsieverts. Get it just right, we'll break a hundred microsieverts an hour with this sample. Now let's go back. I noticed this meter at high rates uh, it updates slower than this. You can see this is already reacting, going right back down the normal levels. This uh, is a little bit slower, so after you put it on something, you want to give it some time to warm up or cool down. It's reacting much slower. I'm sure in probably search mode, Go into search mode and see what it's saying. Okay, it's saying about 79. And you can see the drop in the graph where I moved it off of it for a moment. So we may get up to 100 there. I'm going to move this 
to the side of the table and it should calm down below alarm value. Yep, there it goes. Just a mirror probably two feet away and it's showing 0 0.2 microsieverts right now. And I'll tap the button twice to reset it. And we're back to looking at the Soex Prime. It's going about 80. So it is probably not going to hit the full 100 that we saw on the Gamma Scout. The Pancake Probe will show even more, but uh, this is a good demonstration to show that, you know, the Soaks Prime can read high amounts of radiation. Uh, this is more than you would normally ever see. If you see this much and you're not playing with sources or, uh, you know, work related, you should probably go the other way. But like I said, even a mirror two feet away, the meter is at uh, 0 0.287 microsieverts on the Gamma Scout. And it's climbed up to 80, so it's not probably going to go to 100. Uh, one reason is this has a short fat tube. It's open, you can see the end there. Oh, it already alarmed again. But the tube length covers that sensor more, so it goes all through the tube. This is a very long tube, and it's only covering a portion of the tube. So that could be a difference in the readings. Uh, I could probably get it to go higher, but I'm not going to pull out multiple sources at one time. Me personally, uh, looking at my dosimeter, I'm getting 0 0.15 microsieverts an hour, and I'm sitting probably just a little over two feet away from the source. So we're up to 80, 81, and it's continuing to climb. It may actually eventually reach 100, but I'm not going to sit here and, you know, keep this source exposed unnecessarily. But as a quick tip, I'm sure you wonder why I'm wearing gloves. It's handling this lead pig. So this season 137 sample is going back into the lead pig. And we can see that instantly it starts to drop. Let me move this out of the way. And I will show you a quick tip with the Prime. And I'll go to the back button, go to the main screen. Now if you want to slip this in your pocket, you hold down this left button. It will go into lock mode. Hold down the right button, it won't do anything because it's in lock mode. This screen will turn off. If you hold down the center button when the screen is off, it will pop up for a few seconds to let you look at the reading. It's a way to save battery power. Now we can unlock it. If you hold down the right button, it will turn the screen off. There. Then just press the center button, it'll come back on. If you want to turn it off totally, hold down the center button. And it goes off. The manual is not the best. Uh, it's mostly in Russian. There are some translations just of the you know, specs, but the actual button translations are only in Russian. So that's a quick tip on the Silix Prime. It does its job. Uh, I wouldn't say it's useful for a scientific instrument. Uh, it's good for detection. It's good to locate a source, especially with the search mode. And uh, you can use better instruments to follow up from there. But it's tiny, it'll fit in your pocket. Double A's last a long time. Good unit.